everyone, this is a, another modding tutorial. I don't know if it's just me, but I think my audio sounds somehow better today than previous days, so we're gonna go with it. But good news, I should be getting a new laptop very soon, so that just perhaps might actually improve my audio quality, which has been one of the reasons these videos haven't come out so frequently, just because it's very frustrating to deal with. Okay, so today's video is going to be on choices and menus and stuff. So, obviously there's a few choices in the main game, but they don't matter very much. They change a little bit of the text, but there's a lot of potential for more, and I'll tell you what you can do with it. Um, so basically what choices are, are menus. So to start a menu, you'll do menu and then a colon. And there's, a, there's like two different ways to format this. So you can have this optional text, which I have down here is, what do I think about Sarah's poem? Um, basically this displays in your like bottom text bubble. Um, and it basically can remind the reader what choice they're making as they're playing the game if they weren't actually paying attention. Um, or it just adds additional text to it. I usually use this as more of the internal monologue type thing to um, bring that up in your mind. Um, so this text is optional, you don't need to include it, um, and it just depends on the situation whether you want to include it or not. Then comes your choices. You technically can have one choice, but that would probably only be good for certain scenarios, like if you're just choosing Monica and it's just Monica. Uh, I don't know, I feel like that could happen though. Oh, I just found a dangerous pin on my desk. Um, See, so yeah, that's an option, um, but you can have as many choices as you want, but there's only a limited number that can actually fit on your screen. And then the um, amount of text you have between these quotation marks, it kind of affects how big the text bubble will be on your screen. So that also can limit the number of choices you have. So you probably want to make the text, like where I have choice A, you want to make this fairly concise. And then you can expand on it in this next text here. So this first one is basically a choice that doesn't matter. Um, so you'll have your text choice A, and then some text about that. So you can see what I did here. What I think about Sarah's poem, you loved it. Um, and then I have MC saying, I really like your poem, and then Sayara saying, aw, thanks. But you can see that after this menu, it all goes back into the same text, even the second option. So this is pretty useful if you don't, if you don't want the choice to matter. You basically have some separate text for each sort of scenario, but it won't really matter in the long run. Um, so there's a few ways to do choices that matter. I'm going to show you one and then provide you with others. Um, choices that matter. So it's the same format, but a lot of times for these, you might want to jump to another scene for just kind of keeping stuff organized, or it'll be so different and you want it to lead to different areas. Because it's very hard to write in such indented text if you're going to keep indenting it further and further. So... If you don't want to be working with a smaller amount of space, it's very useful to just jump to a different spot and then start writing like here at this sort of indent. It's just much more helpful. Also, um, you get a little bit lost in your choices if you have like 20 lines of text where this jump is. It can make things a little bit difficult. It can be difficult to find out, hey, have I done the second choice yet? Have I done the third choice yet? I can't really tell because it's really hard to focus in on like all of the text that I have in front of me. Okay, so you can see one case where you might want to use this meaningful choice. If you're sharing poems with your club and you want the poem character that you choose to be the one that you show with first. So this is used in the real game. I have this used in my own mod a lot. <laughs> Because I want everything to matter. Um, so who do I want to share my poem with first? Um, sorry, and then you would jump at the end to some certain spot. Uh, I would definitely suggest having this dialogue in here. Just because it kind of gives you a little something there. So you kind of know what's going on. Um, if we're just scanning the code. But um, you could have no text here and just have the jump. Um, and I guess that works, but... 
I just prefer to do it the other way. Unless you are starting to run into where you have so many menu options or so many um, menus like right in a row. Like I have certain scenarios where I am doing a lot of checks and then I have a lot of different menus. And then at that point it's like, yeah, you don't really need it. Uh, but oh, it is make sure if you're jumping, you have the area you're jumping to another spot. So you can see it's a little thing I added in the bottom here like five minutes before recording this. Um, what can you do with these choices? So obviously you can make them not matter like up here, but if you want them to matter a bit more, you could add a variable, which I haven't talked about yet, but um, what I use in my mod is I basically use variables as sort of like how interested you are in a different girl. So depending on what you say to them, what you choose to say to them, you could be um, you could be telling them that you're more interested and your like, interest score could go up or something. You could also have this lead to different paths if you don't want your story to just be one line, and that's kind of nice. D D DLC itself is very much a single path story, but in modding you don't have to follow those sorts of guidelines, and you can do whatever you want. And then also at the end there, um, it's always an option if you want. You can make these choices matter by making multiple endings, and that's the most mattering of choices. It actually impacts everything. So I, I utilize this a lot in my mind because that's the whole point of it. Um, so yeah, it just depends on what you're working with. You could use these, you could not use these at all, but that just depends on what you want to do. And I think that's it. Well, just let me know what you're looking for next tutorial-wise and I can try to make it happen. Well, bye guys.